guys, it's Lynn here. Hope you are having an incredible day. Now, guys, it's book uh, bad news again. Now, today I have my, well, the very, very first cactus plant that I ever had in my entire collection. This is a Camoserius um, Silvestri commonly known as the peanut cactus and I have had this plant now since a young child. I was actually 12 years old and my brother bought this plant back from a garden centre in England called B&Q. Those who live in England and parts of um, Ireland would know that um, B&Q is a common garden centre here in um, the UK and Ireland and this is going back years ago now and it was this plant was probably about the size of that literally just that there and I was fascinated with it and that got me fascinated with cacti. I was already growing a few plants at the time because my um, my auntie loved growing plants. She used to give me cuttings of different ones but I got fascinated with cacti and I begged him for the plant and we sort of shared it between us looking after it but this is the very, very first one and as I say it's grown into amazing specimen over the years and it has flowered. It flowers every year. It has the most remarkable orange flowers on it. As I say this plant is got to be now um for 35 years old this plant so it is remarkable but the bad news about this plant is I discovered, which I'll show you here, those of you who watch my channel regularly will know that I have had, this year has been an absolute blinking nightmare for mealybugs. Um, I always have had success at keeping them at bay with either the neem oil, which helps as a prevention. I haven't been able to get hold of any this year, so I sort of stopped using that, which possibly hasn't helped. And also the isopropyl alcohol, which is this, which is great because that works on contact and it does get rid of them on contact and it's sort of a natural method but unfortunately it doesn't really prevent them coming back and obviously that's okay if you can see the bugs it's the ones you can't see that is difficult and as I say a lot of the common systemics that would have been available um, I used to use a product called Provedo um, which I never used and don't like using systemics or any chemicals unless absolutely have to but there's times you have to and they don't seem to have even had any effect because a lot of the bugs now become immune to a lot of them and a lot of the ones that used to work now have been withdrawn from the market obviously because of environmental reasons which is totally understandable um, I've had success with this one um, bug clear ultra and thank you to Shane Walsh who recommended this to me um, a while ago and it has seemed to be working I've been using we've me and husband using this preventative on a lot of our plants and so far so good so link up above to Shane's channel if you don't if you're not familiar with with Shane and I'm sure some of you will be by now um, he has an amazing cacti channel and also my amazing fiance Hans um, he has a brilliant cactus and succulent channel and gardening channel called cacti are familiar uh, familiar cacti and other succulent and other beauties <laughs> links up above and um, obviously it's but it has been a bad year in minutes these particular ones here I did do a video on my other Camaceres funny enough they were next to each other and that was covered with these and I've been so far been able to treat it sort of okay with this so fingers crossed I'll do an update on that plant in the future I don't want to do one just yet because I want to see how it goes but now I, I did check this plant at the time and there was no sign of bugs but unfortunately I noticed one the other day and I got it out and as you can see it is bad so I'm going to have to completely dissect this whole entire plant I'm going to take it apart part these this things like this is so badly infected I wouldn't even try and save it I'm just gonna have to just throw it into the into the compost bin here um, obviously the compost bin is actually we don't reuse the compost on our plants when it's infected like this this purely just goes back into the recycling um, to be to be recycled again but not used as compost but um, I would recommend composting anything that's got pests because you don't want to reuse the compost again. But as I said, this is just not worth saving. It's going to be too difficult to save. So I'm going to be taking away the parts that are badly infected, throwing them away. And this plant is probably going to shrink back to a lot smaller size. But the good news is, guys, there is lots of healthy cuttings, as you can see on this plant. It's going to be okay. You probably find a lot of the bugs are underneath. I don't know what state this plant is until I pull it apart. But at least I know whatever state it is underneath, the top of it's going to be okay so I can repropagate this keep the cuttings all dry and then pop them all up again in the spring or probably pop them up into a pot and then start watering again from the spring it's very very easy to propagate this plant you literally just whoops <laughs> pull off a stem and you just pop it on the soil and it roots very easy so I'm confident 
confident this plant's going to make a great recovery. Um, I know that I won't have to worry about that. It's just a case of dissecting it all and um, seeing what damage is done underneath. Obviously, it would have been lovely to have kept this plant looking how it was because it's grown into a beautiful specimen. But um, at the end of the day, at least I've saved the plant. And growing plants, it's not always about pretty flowers and everything else you have to cope with the bad things like the pests and everything else as well and on my channel I like to share what happens if I have rotting plants if I have bugs I like to share it because that's growing plants that's natural you're not always going to have um, sunshine and flowers <laughs> and also like hopefully I can help other people out should you have this happen to your plant as well um, I did a video on dissecting my dragon fruit cactus and links up above to that one as well um, because I had to do a similar thing with that with the dreaded mealies and these are the are the worst for mealybugs because as you can imagine the tiny little stems here it's, it's they hide you don't see them on the plant this plant looks pretty healthy from here but underneath it's where all the mealybugs hide so that it's practically impossible to see I only found it because I happened to just squeeze this out and I saw a little bit underneath when I pulled it where I was like oh my gosh so thank gosh I, I uh, found it when I did and I'm gonna what I'm gonna be doing is dissecting a bit of this plant in front of you I'm gonna turn it upside down pull it apart and I'm gonna see what damage is done with the mealies first and then obviously I'm not gonna film the whole entire thing it's gonna be too long of a video I'm just going to show it in stages and um, obviously this is the little pot with the isopal alcohol I might be able to treat individual stems that are savable in here with that there's so I'm going to put some of that into that bowl this is what I'm going to spray on on the um, up on the stems afterwards before I let them callus over to make sure all the bugs are completely gone and obviously this here I'll just show this is the little the little bin to recycle all things like this just going to go back into there <laughs> so let's get going and let's see what uh, state this plant is in then so um obviously first of all i'm going to be turning it upside down and as i say it's a waste of time trying to keep it all looking how it is because the only way to thoroughly get rid of bugs is to thoroughly turn the plant over and literally take it apart it's a shame but that's what you have to do it's just not worth um well the good news is turned it upside down here the roots look pretty much okay not too bad now as I say this is where mealybugs hide underneath the pots here as you can see that is where they're all hiding but um, that's not a problem I can remove all these here and uh, just turn this around I'm going to be um, first of all taking all these the bottom layers all around here as you can see the sand has gone to the top I use a lot of sand in the soil mix and uh, then I'm going to be gently pulling off some of these stems and seeing what state it is underneath. So um, let's get going. I'm going to just try to think what different what way to do this now. So obviously I'm going to empty this soil to the side here. I don't want that going all over. Turn this upside down and um, pulling off pulling off these first all around here like so. Just going to literally. Probably just pull this apart. I think it's the only way to do this, guys. So I'll just make sure you can see what I'm doing. This is obviously the underneath of the plant. And as I say, it doesn't really matter if all the roots come apart because I'm going to treat this whole entire plant as cuttings. It's the only way to... Um, if I tried to keep it as it is and just sprayed it with bug spray, it's just not going to work. It, fortunately, you're not going to get all the bugs hiding here. Um, it's just literally having to pull it apart and... Uh, now, obviously, when, you, when you're having to do this, gently pull at the roots um, and uh, you don't want to tear it apart like a mad, a mad person. Literally just loosen it up and just pull, pull plants. I hate having to do this, but it's what you just have to do. And uh, it's the only way, see now, this is the only way I'm going to see what the inside of the plant is like. I'll just show you guys, as you know, the outside was pretty bad with the mealies. The good news is here, pulling them apart there, as you can see, that's some of the inside. It doesn't seem to be bad with mealies. In fact, I can't really see any as such. That's perlite. So I'm going to be doing this with all of the parts and any that look pretty good and savable. Um, as I say, it could possibly be mealies there. Yeah, it's difficult sometimes with the perlite. Um, pulling it apart and um, putting that into there. Um, we're putting the savable ones into a separate portion on the table, and then any that's a bit like that, you can see, is very bad. Just go straight in the bin. So I'm going to stop this video now and carry on, so it doesn't go on ridiculously long. But um, 
as I say, if your plants are badly, that this part is badly infected here. There's a waste of time trying to keep that going. As you can see, just throw it out back to the mother earth. Now this looks pretty savable, so that can go. That can go separate here. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to be separating the two parts, and um, I'll show you in a bit how I'm getting on. Now, as you can see here, this is I've just pulled this little healthy cutting. What I'm going to be doing is obviously throwing out all the bits here that's all got the too badly infected and pulling off any healthy cuttings. As this one here is a lovely healthy cutting, no sign of any mealies. That can literally just go on top of the soil and it will root. So that's one I'm keeping. I'm going to be putting, putting the healthy cuttings on one side here. I'm going to tidy this up a bit, by the way. Um, put that on there and then I'll show you all the cuttings and all the rotten bits after I've done it. Now the good news is, as you can see, there's lots of cuttings so far. And there's lots of healthy parts of this plant to save here. So there's no problems there. More than enough to, um, for the plant to carry on quite happily and healthily, which I'm really relieved about because it seems like a lot of the, the bugs were actually lurking around the edges of the plant. And um, I'm thoroughly making sure each stem segment that I do save to propagate has no traces of bugs. Obviously, I'm going to be spraying it with the alcohol and also when they've calloused over and spraying it also with the bug clear ultra so make sure no pests can hide after all of that <laughs> now that's practically the whole plant taken apart and as I say thankfully the bugs seem to be around all the segments that were around the edges of the pot as I say I'm going to be going through each individual stem so it's going to be a time consuming process guys so obviously I'm going to speed the video up here and just show you basically what I'm doing. This, as you can see, is just not worth saving. It's um, so bad. It really is. I mean, how this remained hidden is just nightmarish. But I'm going to put it back. But the good news is, as I say, I've got plenty of cuttings. The plant's going to be a lot smaller than it was, but I've saved it. And sometimes it's not a bad thing to restart plants you've had for a long time from cuttings again because um, it makes their plant healthier. And as I say, its genetics are still going on, so it may not be the original plant but um, a bit like all of us when we um, you know we're with our siblings and our um, children we sort of carry on genetically that way I suppose <laughs> when we pass over on the physical sense but um, as I say that's not really got bugs it's not a healthy healthy um, plant so that's going to go back into the um, into the composter as well now you may wonder why I want to keep this strange part of the plant here. Now it's completely bug free. It's not the most healthiest looking of the part of the plant, but this is the original rootstock from the plant from obviously 30, um, 35 years ago. And that's part of the original base. So it's other than that, it's healthy. It's got a good root system. That's just been grown a little bit underneath where it's stretched a bit from the lack of light because it's had the other stems over the top of it. But that's going to recover. And that's just more of a sentimental thing to me than anything. So I'm going to be keeping that part there. What I'm also doing is what well, every every segment that is savable that has no sign of bugs, I'm still going over. I'm dipping a little little brush in here in the isopropyl alcohol because um, I'm taking no chances <laughs> and then just going over it lightly over the whole of the stems of each individual one as you can see there's a lot of plants it's going to take a long time but it's worth it just to make sure there's no hidden tiny bugs or eggs and as I say I'm going to also be treating it once I uh, they've sort of calloused over the cuttings and that um, with the gut, the bug clear also but as I say that's good no bugs will survive after this it worked very well with my dragon fruit uh, plants so um, so far so good is going to be with this one also again I've got part of the original root stock here this is the original part of the stock and as you can see that's all the roots there otherwise healthy and although if we move the top part there that will callus over and it will side, it will send out little side shoots of little more peanut cacti around it and carry on growing again. As I say, this is because this is the original part of the plant that I've had for 30, 35 years. So this is the part I want to keep. And I'm glad to say it's savable. You might think, why save when I've got all them cuttings? As I say, it's more sentimental to me. That's the original, original roots. This is from the very first time, the very first um all them years so it's special to me and it's we'll make a recovery it'll just shoot from there 
Now this is also, I possibly think, the very first part of the plant because as you can see it's completely formed a, a woody, um, it's a woody peanut uh, type of the cactus here, the, one of the actual peanuts as they call it, the stems, and as I say I've cut the bottom bit off because it's just full of matted mealies at the bottom of it, but um, I'm going to let that callus over. I see why would I want to keep this horrible looking part when there's all these lovely fresh cuttings as I've got over there. As I said with the other one, this is part of the original plant and it's sentimental to me and it's, although it's scabby looking, it will reroot itself and fresh growth will come from it, so um, extra special. Extra special to me anyway, because it is it is the original part of the plant. Now guys, that's the plant all completely dissected and the good news is I've managed to save um, quite a lot of cuttings and obviously the original root stock from the plant and the original main segments there which are okay um, as I say they're sort of not the nicest looking but they're sentimental um, it's part of the original plant that carries on so I have got the original part of the plant that's 35 years old and as I say that's got the roots on it no problem that'll be potted up and that will send out uh, shoots from around the, the around the base there and these are all the healthy other cuttings here and I've completely gone through every single segment with the isopropyl alcohol to make sure there's no traces of any any uh, mealies left and as I say I'm going to be leaving these cuttings now they're not actually cuttings as such more segments that have taken a apart from the the main plant that was infected and we let these um these segments just to dry over probably overnight and then i'm going to be potting these up in the morning into a into a pot and as i say because it is winter now i'm not going to be watering them it's literally going to be planting them all placing them on top of the soil in a pot and um, keeping them dry until the spring and um, then they'll start to, when the, the lighter days start coming again, they'll start searching for water and sending out roots. And as I say, probably when the weather starts warming, possibly in the February time, we get some sunny days, I'll probably just miss them with a little bit of rainwater to stop them from shriveling up too much. But um, they'll, they're very, very easy to propagate, so this plant will fully recover again. I'll just show you the parts of the plant I've thrown away. I've had to throw out a big section of it, as you can see there. But um, it's just not healthy. And to be honest with you, the plant probably was in need of a good um, good pruning anyway so it's not such that not such a bad thing <laughs> and um, as I say stay tuned for a video probably coming in the next day possibly tomorrow if I can get it done and um, pot it up and I'm going to be showing you potting these up and um, so thank you again for watching <laughs> so guys hopefully should this happen to your plan you know what to do and uh, thanks so much for your support, your amazing comments and your wonderful likes. I really, really appreciate it, guys. And um, I cannot thank you enough. So I want to send you loads of love, heaps of happiness and tons and tons of plant power. As always, from Ireland. Until the next video, guys. Bye.